My name is Jamon Goodwin. I'm a junior majoring in computer science here at North Carolina A&T State University. Hi, my name is Morgan English. I'm a junior computer engineering major. How y'all doing? My name is Ryan Griffin. I am a senior computer engineering major. Hi, my name is Carice Hansen, and I am a junior computer science major. Hi, I'm Tiffany Francique, a junior computer science major. So what is Quicksort? Quicksort is a sorting algorithm originally developed by Tony Hoare in 1960. This algorithm was developed to sort words in a Russian to English dictionary. Now, this is also a divide and conquer al algorithm. It sorts numbers in an array based on the pivot. If a number is less than the pivot, they're sorted to the left side of the array. If it's greater than, they're sorted to the right side, and then concatenate it into one array. Also, it has a worst case and a best case. Now, the worst case is represented by big O of n squared, and the best case is represented by big O of n log n. This tells the running time of the algorithm. What is pivot? The pivot or pivot element is an element of the matrix, an array, or some other finite set which is selected first by an algorithm to do certain calculations. The pivot element in a quicksort is an element that is selected as the boundary for partitioning. Quick number. Quicksort sorts all elements left and right of the pivot recursively. Everything is centered around the pivot. After the pivot is in place, each sublist gets its own pivot. How does quicksort algorithm works? The first step quicksort does is it picks an element called a pivot from the list. The second step quicksort does is that it reorders the list so that all values less than the pivot come before the pivot and that all values greater than the pivot goes after the pivot. However, if the number equals the pivot, then it could go either way. After this operation is completed, the pivot is in the final position. Final position. This is called the partition operation. The definition of partition is division into or distribution into portions or shares. The final step of quicksort algorithm, it recursively sorts the sublists of lesser elements and the sublists of greater elements together. The pseudocode. This is the pseudocode for quicksort. This is the function for the, to sort the quicksort array, or a method, depending on if you're using C++ or Java. So the function quicksort accepts an array. Then, and within the method, you create an empty list, a less list, and a greater list. Now, depending on which program you're using, which code, you might want to use or C++ or Java, you have a linked list, an array list, a regular array that you can add your own boundaries to. Now here's an if statement. In the if statement, if the length of the array is less than or equal to 1, it returns the array to the main method. Because an array that's less than or equal to 1 is already sorted. Less than meaning it can be 0. Select and remove a pivot value a pivot from the array, and for every value x in the array, it continues with the if statement. If x is less than or equal to the pivot, then it puts it in the less array. If it is greater than, it else append x to greater. That means that the x value goes into the greater array because it is greater than the pivot. Now that makes, that makes it so that it's two different arrays. And then the return statement says return, and it passes it to a concatenate a method that puts together the less array, which is sorted, the pivot in the middle, and the quick sort in, in the greater array, so that they can all be together and be sorted. So at the end, your array Look something like this if it was jumbled. I'm going to do a quick sort example. It can be quite confusing, so I'm going to try and explain it to the best that I can. All right, so you have a list of numbers. These numbers are jersey numbers for a children's basketball team, and it is unsorted. I'm going to sort it for you. So in the list, you have your first and your last value. The first value is going to be your pivot value. 
next step is to find the first number from the left that is greater than 10, which is 17. I'm going to name this your high. Next thing is to find the first value that is lower than 10 from the right, which is your last number, 8. I'm going to name this your low. You then swap these two values in the list and rewrite. Again, you have your first and your last values and the pivot is still 10. You again look for the first number from the left that is greater than 10, which is 13, this is your high, and the first number that is less than 10 from the right, which is 2. I'm going to name this your low. You then swap these values and rewrite. You again have your last and your first, first being the pivot, 10, find the first number that is higher than 10 from the left, which is now going to be 13, and the first number lower than 10 from the right, which is now 4. As you see, the low and the high have now surpassed each other, in which case you now swap the lowest number with the pivot number, which is 10. And now the array of numbers is going to look as such. Now your pivot number is here and you see that now the list is separated from the values less than 10 and the values greater than 10. You then divide these two different lists of numbers and divide the two lists of numbers, I'm sorry. From here, you have 13 and 17, which it just so happens they are already sorted, so you don't do anything with those. And now you have 4, 7, 8, 5, 2, and 9. Again, you have your first and your last value. Your pivot is going to be 4. You look for the first value that is greater than 4 from the left which is 7, this is your high, and the first number that is less than 4 from your right, which is 2, and you then swap these values and rewrite. Again, you have your first, your last, and your pivot, which is also your first. You then look for the number greater than 4 from the left, which is now going to be 8, your high, and from the right, the lowest, is 2. As you see again, the high and the low have surpassed each other, so now you swap 2 and 4, which is your low and your pivot, and it looks as such. I apologize. Alright, as you see, your pivot is now here, and you now have the values that are less than 4 and the values that are greater than 4. <sighs> There is only one value on this side, so you really don't need to do any sorting there. But as you see, this set of numbers right here are still out of order. So you then branch off and go through this process once again. Your first value is 8. It's also your pivot. Last value is 9. You look for the first value that is greater than 8 from the left which is 9, that's going to be your high, and the first number that is less than 8 from the right, which is 7, your low, and as you see, low and high have surpassed each other once again, so you swap 7, which is your low, with 8, which is your pivot, so now the list will look like this. Now your pivot is here, the numbers that are greater than 8 are over here and the numbers that are less than 8 are on this side. As you see, there's only one value, so you don't have to sort that, but you do have to sort the 7 and the 5. You have your first and your last, and your pivot will be 7. You compare the two and see that 5 is less than 7, so of course these two numbers are going to swap and are going to look like this. And now you're going to have your final list of numbers that have been 
sorted and it's going to look like this. So what did you learn? I actually learned a lot sitting here just helping y'all record this video. Um, I learned that you know Quicksort was founded or developed in 1960 by a guy named Tony Core. Um, and it was actually originally used as a, a language translator from German to English. I didn't even know this. I didn't even know that. All right. And then uh, we also learned about algorithms and you know how you got to pick an element and then a pivot point, which is at the beginning of your list, and then the element which has to be an array or a matrix or something like that. And then, you know, they showed um, some of the pseudocode. And I didn't even know if you just use the if statement. It's, it seems pretty simple, if you ask me. And then, when she went, it really made a lot of sense when she put up that example on the board, where it just pretty much just goes through and you pick the highest number and you sort it, in, whether it be an array or a matrix or however you do it, link list, array list, however. It's, it's, it's fairly simple. I, I feel like you all did a great job explaining that. Thank, Thank you. you. 